Kev, let's start off. Um, describe the play that, that led to the ejection. Uh, I try. <laughs> they don't want you to hold it. Oh, no, crazy today. I tried to uh, run through the screen. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, that was just a result of me trying to blow the screen up. Uh-huh. I definitely, uh, I mean, from looking at it at the tape, it looked like I extended a little bit, but I was just trying to blow the screen up, get over it, fight through, but you know, it is what it is. That said, you get ejected in the third. As a team, though, you still guys, you guys still go out and shoot over 65%, which is a franchise record. Really? What does that say about the growth that you guys have developed? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think we started off the game with a nice flow and on the defensive side, and we moved the ball to each other on offense, and we got five guys in double figures. Um, that's usually a good formula for us, but I think we just had a good flow and rhythm all game, which was able to, we was able to see the ball go on the rim. Kevin, as, as James has kind of been finding his rhythm after really not being able to play during the summer, we've seen him play seven games. You've seen him every day for a month. Is it a process that's kind of been evident to you along the way? It's interesting because I didn't feel like he was round. I felt like he was in good shape when we came into camp, you know, working out with him this summer. Um, you know, I felt like he looked good to me. I just think it's a matter of getting comfortable with the NBA game again, the physicality, the quickness of the game. I mean, we all have an adjustment period when we come back from the all season of playing the NBA style of basketball. It's always evolving. It's so fast, so quick. So it may take us some time, all of us, mentally, all players, to you know, figure out, you know, what that bump and grind is like again. And it usually takes a few games, but you're starting to see around the league, everybody getting more and more comfortable with the style of play. Kevin, you guys had a, a three-point lead at the end of the first quarter, and then Steve comes in with LaMarcus, Javon, Patty, DeAndre, and Bruce. What, what do you like about that lineup? Um, I like that we got, <clears throat> there's a good balance of players on that group. Where you got, you know, scores in LaMarcus um, and Patty um, and defenders who can cut, make plays. Um, long athletic guys and uh, DB, Bruce, and who was the last guy again? Who? And, and uh, Javon, yeah, DB, Bruce, and Javon, they like, you know, athletic, quick um, guys that can get out and play in space and great defenders. So, yeah, I mean, we, uh, I like what we've seen with that group. Um, sure, we're going to keep trying to fine tune what that looks like, uh, but tonight, we put pressure on them on the offensive side of the ball and play great defense. Uh, Kevin, you, you've said a lot of nice things about LaMarcus and how good it is to have him back. But that second quarter, he came out there, he hit his first five shots and, and kind of got some separation right there that that you never lost the rest of the game. Uh, you know, What can you say about, about what he's delivering to this team and, and kind of stepping up to fill a void? Yeah, he just plays that. Uh, he's like that common force. You know, you can throw the ball to him in the post. He'll slow stuff down. He's a good passer. Obviously a great mid-range shooter. Good back-to-the-basket player. Um, so I'm just about confidence. And, you know, it looks like that's what we all were worried about coming back from what he came back from, how he would look physically and, you know, timing-wise. But, <laughs> you know, some of the things you just, you know, it's just in your, it's just in your DNA, you know. So him coming out there knocking down shots, just knowing how to play, you know, is there. I'm curious, Kevin, after you guys still had a double-digit lead even after you left, but immediately after that, you guys had an 11-0 run, and I think James had five, all five of the assists. <clears throat> Hey, what's your reaction to, you know, seeing him kind of put his stamp on the game immediately after you leave, kind of stepping up for his team in that fashion? Yeah, I mean, uh, I want to take credit and say I ignited my team and get and, and my leadership uh, was the reason why they were able to go on that 11-0 run. Uh, you know, so I ignited the crowd with me getting kicked out and my team. So, yeah, um, but James is a controller of the game. He understands the game and put people in good positions and, it's not a surprise that he can take us on a run so fast. And following up on that, is it fair? I mean, obviously, a lot's been made about, you know, the fact that he had to rehab over the summer and he didn't get to really play. But I'm curious, is it fair to say that in the earlier stages of the season, he was really hunting like the mismatch, you know, like the pick on guy. And now he's just 
attacking whoever's in front of them. It doesn't seem to matter. Is that a fair <laughs> I mean, way to paint it? Yeah, I mean, it's a balance. I mean, we still want to, you know, it's going to be games where we feel like if we can use a guy and pick on a guy or, you know, I think it's just a field thing for James and he understands that. And tonight he made the right decisions and, um, you know, when you see the ball going the rim early too, it gives you a lot of confidence. And I think tonight he's just, you know, when guys switching from three, that let me know that he in a good place. You know, it wasn't no rim ends. It was like his body is right. His mechanics is right. And he knocking down shots with ease and it looked incredible tonight. So, you know, he's just keep building and, you know, and I know he has that same mindset. You got 15 and 7 tonight from DeAndre Bembry. Just defensively, he's always had that reputation as a guy that can be disruptive. Offensively, though, what have you seen out of him? Um, I think the defense feed, feeds off his offense. You know, he's engaged and, well, he's always engaged on defense. But when you get deflection steals and getting out in transition, that opens up his offense game even more. And, you know, with the way we move the ball, is the ball's going to find him as well. So, um it's a matter of him being, like I always say, be confident in them shots that you shoot and the opportunities that you get, take full advantage of them. And he's one of those players that understands that. Great. Kevin, real quick, some non-basketball real quick, because I know you got a lot of stuff going on off the court. Uh, what can you tell us? Uh, Steve, talking before the game a little bit about James, just kind of getting going a little bit. Did he just kind of look like he's starting to play a little bit freer to you? Yeah, I think he's... he's uh, you know, improving in all areas. I think his uh, conditioning, um, you know, his explosiveness, his confidence, his feel, his rhythm, everything is moving forward and in the right direction. Coach, in that, uh, in that second quarter to start, I think you went with Javon, Patty, DeAndre, Bruce. Uh, what, do you, what do you like about that lineup, about those four guys and what they were able to do? Yeah, I think it's a very active, defensive-minded lineup, you know, so they, uh, you know, I thought they're... You know, they're, they're, they're naturally a defensive-minded group, but they got to also find ways to score and play with pace and make each other better, and, and I thought they, they were good on, on both ends. So uh, really proud of everybody's performance. Coach, was it, was it just one of those nights as far as field goal percentage is concerned? You set a record as a team, 65.2% uh, from the floor. Yeah, you know, it was. I think, um, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of... Uh, randomness and variance to shots going in and out but I thought overall we, we tried to play the right way we tried to get into actions we tried to play early and quick and um, share the ball and make good good decisions we turned it over a little bit too much but I thought uh, we stuck with it and tried to play the right way a, a jump like this may not have been expected in terms of the shooting percentage but in in what you just said in terms of playing the right way what else can you add in terms of this being a byproduct of again another rep of playing together and in, in, in getting up and down the floor and understanding where each other wants to be i think so i think we got a lot to sort out still a lot to to, to figure out a lot of growth ahead of us but uh we're working at it guys are trying to do the right things trying to to implement what we're asking and and you know, it's it's not easy when it's a new group. And, um, you know, we started the year, we did all our planning with a, with a group that's not quite here. And so we're, we're trying to, you know, figure out how this group can best play together. And that takes time. Steve, this is uh, twofold. Kevin may have gotten a little lucky Friday, um, not so much today. I'm curious, A, what was your vantage point on that play? Could you see it, the elbow? Yeah, I mean, I saw the replay. Um, <clears throat> you know, I... I, you know, I don't know really what the rule is and what the line is, um, so I, I, I shouldn't really comment because I'm not really sure what the precedence is or what they're looking for there. And obviously great players kind of step up when they're needed. And almost immediately after that, uh, you guys have the 11-0 run, and I think James had all five assists on all five baskets. I mean, what's your reaction when you kind of see him putting his stamp on a game in that fashion? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, it's, it's important. You know, you lose Kevin, uh, you have a nice lead, but, you know, momentum can swing fast. So I think when we lost Kevin, it's important that we continue to show, uh, you know, the impetus and the willingness to try to, to be uh, attack-minded and do the right things. I thought James was great. He led us in that stretch, being aggressive, making the right decisions, uh, protecting the ball. And, and um, you know, that was a pivotal stretch to make sure we could win tonight. And... And when you look at, at Kevin having these two incidents in a row like that, is he feeling any uh, 
uh, aggravation or, or, or pressure or anything because of the way things are being called these days, or do you have any explanation for it? Greg, I don't have my therapist, therapist license, but um, I, I would say they were just two random events, and I wouldn't read too much into it. Uh, I think he's, uh, he's had a laugh about both of them and uh, held his hand up and, and knows, uh, you know, especially with chucking the ball in the stands the other night, it, it was just a, uh, a random and hilarious event that uh, we'll put behind us. You talked about DeAndre Bembry and what he brings on defense. Just offensively, what have you seen at him since you've been giving him these early minutes? About him offensively? Yeah. So good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just think that uh, he plays with pace. Uh, he's an excellent cutter. Um, you know, he, he's finishing the ball very well. I mean, I think he made a three tonight. So, you know, even though he's not, like, profiled as a, an offensive player, you know, he still brings things to the offensive end, you know, with his uh, quickness, athleticism, the pace of play, willingness to sacrifice with cuts and screens, and and then, you know, we've seen a flair for finishing as well, so uh, just proud of him, you know, the energy he brings to the game, the competitive nature, he gets his hand on a lot of balls out there that um, make it difficult to play against him, and uh, he was fantastic tonight. Steve, um, you would just said that you know you guys went into the season preparing with a certain group but then having to veer off that and learn a new group um and you told us in philly hey it might not be pretty for a little bit are we still kind of i know you guys won two in a row are we still in that like it might not be pretty for a little bit period how long do you think that might take um do you think it might be a couple more weeks or what yeah i, I think we've got a ways to go you know it's um you know i think we're in many ways we're trying to still analyze like how we can you know, make some adjustments and refine what we do. It's, you know, finding a, a certain direction is more difficult than maybe it looks from the outside when you, when, you, when we look at it. Uh, having said that, we got some really, really great pieces to, to work with, and it's just trying to find the balance between the different styles, backgrounds, and how they can find connectivity and connection out there with one another. And uh, that's, that's a process. I think it takes time for coaches, and it also takes time then for the players. And then you yeah, I don't think it changing back would be as, as difficult a situation at all. Um, but uh, yeah, right now it's it's just something that we're the really guys are doing are doing great. They're they're working at it. They're trying to implement, and you know we'll we'll continue to chip away at that. That's just a process that one as coaches we're still looking and analyzing, and then deciding what directions we want to go with. Um, is something that could, you know, it, that'll ever evolve, you know, throughout the year. But can we decide on some some more firm uh, directions is, is still a process we're entertaining right now. Okay, thanks, Steve. Thanks, guys.